Join us as we discuss the connection between cardiovascular disease and dementia with Dr. Kellyanne Niotis. She explains how APOE and cholesterol impact your brain health and the importance of monitoring blood pressure for optimal brain function. Let's begin. So this is really the easiest way to understand the risk of cardiovascular disease and dementia. So there is a particular gene called apolipoprotein E, and this gene is involved in cholesterol metabolism and transport throughout the body, the periphery, but especially the brain. And what this gene or what this protein does is it helps facilitate trans transport of lipids and cholesterol between different brain cells. So brain cells need cholesterol for their membranes, their cell membranes to maintain fluidity and integrity. They also need cholesterol to synthesize things like important neurotransmitters, which help you move and help you think. So people with this ApoE4 gene, for example, make a protein of ApoE that isn't as efficient at delivering cholesterol between different brain cells. And what can happen is that these cholesterol particles can really build up inside neurons and cause neurotoxicity and cell death. What this gene also does in the periphery is lead to cardiovascular disease or atherosclerotic disease. It increases your peripheral LDL and ApoB. It causes plaque buildup in your arteries and blood vessels. That can lead to heart disease and heart attack. So while this gene can impact the way that your periphery metabolizes and disposes of cholesterol, it also has impacts in the way that your brain utilizes and disposes of cholesterol. That's one really obvious link. But in people who don't have this gene, there still is a link between things like cardiovascular disease and dementia. And that's because what happens peripherally often happens centrally. So if you do have high cholesterol, high ApoB, and that's causing narrowing of the blood vessels in your heart and your legs, your neck, also going to affect the blood vessels in your brain. And the brain is a very, it needs a lot of nutrition. So it needs effective blood delivery for oxygen, for glucose, for essential vitamins and fatty acids. When it isn't getting that because there's a blockage in the blood vessels, you can obviously see how that could lead to problems down the road. Monitoring your blood pressure is really important. I think a lot of People will see their doctor and they'll get these borderline blood pressure readings, like the top number will be in the 130s, maybe hitting 140, and their doctor will tell them like, oh, it's a one-time reading. You're okay. And the truth is that probably if your blood pressure is that high, unless you have what we call white coat hypertension, where where you get super nervous in your doctor's office, I understand. But in if you do ever have a reading of high blood pressure in your doctor's office, it's really worthwhile monitoring your blood pressure at home on your own and making sure that that top number is really in the 120s because that seems optimal for overall brain health. Um, Don't accept an okay number. Make sure that you're checking your blood pressure in the morning, in the evening, because there can be fluctuations and you want to make sure that in general your numbers are appropriate for brain health. We hope you enjoyed this video. To access a free Mastering Brain Health course led by Dr. Richard Isaacson, visit ind.org learn. And to directly contribute to IND's research efforts, visit ind.org donate.